Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome to Britannia. If you're not familiar with this game, it's actually based on an older board game that itself is based on the conquest of Britain by the Romans. Now, the fascinating thing here is we have many different stories to tell. And if you take a look over here, we've got Dux Britannia, which is the entire actual campaign of the governor of Britain. And essentially, you're working for Emperor Claudius to establish dominance. But the thing is, you don't have to play as the Britons. You don't have to play as the Celts. It's completely up to you, kind of, who you play as. Now, over here, um, if you take a look, we actually have a player control button so we can determine kind of who is who in this case let's say i just want to play as yellow i simply go ahead and turn player control over here to the pc now you can imagine if you want to do a hot seat game with a friend or something like that you can easily just go ahead and switch off there is going to be a multiplayer as well. However, the multiplayer is not yet in the game. I do believe on release it will be there. As you can see, we've got a bunch of different stories to choose from. Even the Arcturus Rex campaign, we've got Excalibur at the time of King Arthur. We've got Furor Normanis, or of course, the invasion of the Normans. And what I would recommend for new players is going and taking a look at the tutorial. Well, let's jump into one of these and get that sword drenched in blood. What a beautiful map. Now, guys, we are taking the Dux Britannia campaign. Essentially, this campaign is all about the invasion of England by Emperor Claudius's forces um, to, of course, establish dominance here. Um, now, the first thing we're going to do, guys, is go ahead um, and essentially move these troops onto the beaches, start taking some territory from the enemy. It looks like we're going to have to attack the forces of the Belge. And the one thing that I really love um, about the descriptions in this game is we get a proper screen here. I don't typically see this um, in other um, SGS games. It sort of allows us to kind of take a look here at the kind of uh, enemy we're facing. It also lets us know what their goals are, essentially sort of what they want to do, what they plan to do, etc. So when you look at those region goals, it sort of lets you know the war goals of your enemy. Now let's begin that invasion. Man, I can't wait. I'm going to send four troops or four legions to Wessex. Um, I'm going to get some in Sussex here. And what I'm using here is simply the control button to go ahead and select the units. If you want to, you can use the create order or create movement button, but I find this to be just a little more intuitive. So there we go, plenty of forces on the beach. Why don't we spread them out a little bit more even? Spread them over here. As you can see, we can kind of move them in between if we want, but that is gonna use up their movement points. Send two over here and that final one right there to Sussex. So while we are going to attack the tribes down here, I want to clarify that there's a lot going on with the tribes that we are not aware of, and specifically the Breitwalda. Basically, the game is all about victory points. The player with the most victory points wins the game. And there are several ways we can, of course, get those victory points. Conquering regions is one of them, defeating armies. But the most important one, at least for the barbarian player, is to get votes basically to get the other Barbarian players to vote for you, and that will give you four VPs every single election, which is just excellent. So let's go here to the battles, guys. It looks like the first one is going to be the Battle of Kent. And I have to say, uh, I feel pretty confident here. Let's go ahead. And basically anything over a five will be a kill for most units. Um, but you do have to refer to the rule section because I believe for cavalry, things like that, it's going to be basically a combined six. So you've got to get to at least a six here. Let's go for it. Another attack. These barbarians will die in droves. Excellent strike there not bad i actually thought we were gonna lose a legion um but we're good so as you can see guys because we occupied sussex we get two victory points and the actual fort here happens to be one of the units that we can get here in britain at the moment so forts and legions that's really what we're working with right now 
Now we still have a movement phase here. So despite having these wonderful forts here on the coast, might be a good idea for us to just grab a couple of legions and try to grab additional territory. Now, of course, there's always a risk involved in doing that, but I think it's an important step to take to establish dominance on the island. Now, of course, if you are playing one of the tribal factions, you've got a totally different set of things you've got to do here. Now, by the way, guys, the only reason I'm leaving this legion with only one troop is I don't expect anybody to break through here. Although, I want to clarify, there are coastal invasions in this game. And basically, you'll occasionally get an opportunity to perform one of these coastal invasions. Um, as the tribal player, you want to consider those things. But the tribal politics in this game are absolutely fierce. So you want to be very, very careful not to stab your fellow tribes in the back. And especially if you're playing against the Romans, I don't know, maybe first smash the Romans. See, we're getting deeper in here, and these infantry are starting to be a little rougher around the edges. Um, we are taking that territory, I believe. We're going to try to go for Essex as well. And there we go. So within basically the first few weeks of our invasion, we're taking some important territory here from the enemy, but we're also getting these tribes pretty pissed off. Let's go ahead. And as you can see, guys, it's going to be the Belgai turn. They're going to have to go ahead um, and do their own thing. Doesn't look like there's much they can do, as you can see. They have very few troops at the moment, but what they are going to do is increase their infantry count in Suffolk there. So, it's clear that these tribesmen are raising people from the surrounding area to join them as best as possible. And look at that! It looks like the Belgate got a leader card. Now, this particular leader card is going to, of course, make that unit a bit stronger. And where is she headed? directly south towards us. That's got me a little worried. Is that Boudica? No, it's Fiche, I think. Wait, no, it's... Fiche is the name of the region. Is that Boudica? It could be. It absolutely could be Boudica. And I'll be honest, I'd really rather not face her currently. Now, there is going to be a battle here between two different tribes. As you can see, they will war with each other without a shadow of a doubt. And it looks like the Belgae are trying to grab as much territory as possible. Who knows, perhaps to unify before our invasion really gets in a full swing. I think I might go for that character there, try to shut him down, because that's going to get in the way of Roman law. And once again, the Gunadians are going to go ahead and do their thing. Now, you don't always need to play, of course, as Rome. In the other campaigns, you don't necessarily get this invasion mechanic. Everything is very even. But we decided to kind of show you the invasion mechanic here. I think it's just a really cool one, especially for anybody that enjoys playing as the Romans. Up Brigantes! Here we go, the wonderful Brigantes player. Uh, North FC, for those of you that are familiar. And absolutely beautiful. They've got a very, very strong presence here in the north. And as you can see, the income reflects that. Um, they're not going to go to war with the Picts yet. But as you can imagine, for the Roman player, slowly moving up here, we're going to be losing troops over time. Now, we do get troops added to our nation pool occasionally. But obviously, you've got to juggle that. Because if you lose your troops, you're never going to get to the north. You know, maybe you'll get midway um, in the middle of England. But to really make it work, you just have to be very careful as the Roman player not to overextend yourself. And the way I'm going to do that here is essentially take the Cornwallian coast over there, because then I know the enemy can't attack by land um, in any of these areas, and that's going to make me feel just a little bit safer. So there we go, guys. At the end of the at the end of the actual um, set of turns, it's going to let you know who is gaining victory points. And why? And the reason we're gaining victory points is because of the land conquered. It's really that simple. So game turn N1 and to the next phase and look at that. So I did say I want to attack Boudica and I definitely, I don't even know if it's Boudica, but we're about to find out. If it is, two troops, two legions are about to be absolutely crushed against her. One, two. I'm not sure if we can merge from two separate tiles. 
Yes, we can, baby. I think that's strong enough to take her on. Although, again, I think we may have overextended herself, ourselves. I was just warning against that. So what I'm going to do is get one of or these two legions here and immediately into battle against those Belgae. And over here, I'm just going to take two of my legions. That's really the goal, is taking the Devon Coast. I'm moving in with all three there, because I'm just going to keep going westward to take Cornwall. And I'm hoping that that will result in a victory for us. Guys, let's go to Devon. Really, this is the most important territory for me, because it's the one where if I take it down, it's one less fear of being overrun. Now, what happened there was we had a draw. The enemy did not get destroyed, but he retreated. And because he's got that sea route right there, he was able to get back into his own territory. And I must say, that makes these guys quite strong over here in Wales. Let's go to Suffolk. Got very lucky there. The enemy rolled a one. If not, we would have been, we would have lost a legion essentially. And there we go. We did lose our first legion. That's how it starts. It begins to bleed and it is Boudicca. How awesome is that guys? If we right click, we actually get additional information about her. That is awesome. So let's go ahead and hope we can kill Boudicca right away. Yes! Slaying Boudicca. Leader Boudicca has been eliminated because no unit of their nation remains in the region. And I will admit, the Romans are a bit overpowered, but that's a pretty nice start. Getting rid of Boudicca in Vice is going to make the rest of our conquest just a little bit easier. Well, guys, I hope you're enjoying the game so far. I really love to play it, and we're going to play a little bit more. I might even try out some of the tribal gameplay to see how that Breitwalda election works. But obviously, if you're in a multiplayer setting, that whole Breitwalda election system is going to be even more fascinating. Of course, you can maybe talk to your friends over Discord, and uh, something they didn't have during these times, of course, get them to uh, vote for you in that election and make sure you're the tribal leader. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like comment, and subscribe, and check out the game in the description of the video. Take care.